ski here. I might have to pump it a bit. The tank here. Let's start it one more time. Not in here. All right, so Tony came down. We didn't get any bit on video. We did a lot of diagnosing. Um, to get this thing to run, it wasn't. I'll try and explain it. Tony be like, "Yeah, your explanation's wrong." But uh, basically, on the starter, there's supposed to be a spot where I can run the positive for when you're cranking key on, and it will send power to the coil. Starter doesn't have that, and the, if you look online, there's a picture of a starter solenoid that says certain models have and certain don't. So mine apparently doesn't, and I don't know why, but the wire runs there. So um, that's the reason it's not starting. I have to wire up the fuel pump into the fuse block. I'll show you guys where I'm gonna take that. Tony showed me a good spot for that. Um, so right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass bypass the ballast that's in here, the resistor, and I'm just gonna run the positive wire right to the coil that I bought. It's a coil that's designed to not use a ballast. Um, it's a generic one I got from Napa. So we're gonna try that. Tony says it'll run. So we're gonna hook up the fuel pump, then I guess I gotta look at the carburetor. Um, yeah, once the fuel pump's hooked up and if the carb is doing what it should, which I think it will because it fired at one point uh, when Tony was playing there, it got just the right voltage and it went um, off carburetor, but no fuel pump running at that point. So that's probably why it stalled. So yeah, we're gonna get those two things done and then we'll see if we can start it, guys. Waff of key. So... I think I might have to switch out the starter at some point if I want to run it with the ballast, but if it works without it, I think it'll be simpler not to have that there. So uh, that's kind of my theory at this point. Let's get going on that and uh, I'll show you right quick uh, what I got to tap in a uh, 10 amp fuse and a wire for the fuel pump positive. So let's go check that out. Inside this split tube is the wire that runs to the fuel pump and I've got 10 amp fuse that is required for that pump we're gonna i moved out of the engine bay we're gonna move it right here to the fuse block and we're going on the non-controlled side here off this main power wire we're gonna top in um we're gonna fuse it into there so the fuel pump's gonna be on its own fuse um it won't affect any of the other systems uh i guess draw and whatnot it'll stay consistent that way um yeah we're gonna start with that uh, cut and splice in here, solder a nice connection, and we should be a lot better off um, than the fuel pump will run. And uh, yeah, I'll show you where this uh, cable runs up to, or sorry, uh, wire. So I've just kind of joined it in here uh, alongside the main harness. This goes up to the fuse block and other places under the dash. Kind of goes down here and it comes up at this point here so i had the fusible uh, link area in here the fuse uh, I've, I've pulled that out now it comes in here and this just grounds on the secondary terminal tony and i were saying that's actually not a bad sit situation to have this point here um and it's drawing fuel we've we had it doing pulling fuel just by putting on the positive so yeah that's my setup. I think it's fairly clean looking. Uh, this is going to change yet. This will run down the original hard lines that are just down there. Once we pull a proper tank in here, I'll, I'll put new metal lines in there or, or clean them out if they don't look bad. But new can't be a bad option. And new tank, new lines. Good stuff. All right, guys, girls, I've done a proper job. Tapped into the power wire here, soldered it, and now I have my 10 amp fuse here on, on the non-controlled side, but it is now controlled running up to the fuel pump. So if something goes wrong, we're good right close to the source here. Um, I'm going to tuck this up away. I also fixed some of the wires in here that... They were literally soldered and electrical taped around. I got more in this vehicle that I will find. And I know there's some just butt crimped ones. That's not okay with me. That'll get changed yet too. 
All right, guys, let's turn the key to on position, see if we get the pump sound going. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it, but I'll let you know if I hear it for sure. It would help to have the battery go in. Let's hook that up. Okay. Let's go back into the car here. So let's see if we can get the pump to run and key on. Hear that? We have gas pumping. All right, guys and girls, I think I've conquered this. I can start it off the key now. That's exciting. And then what happened was the throttle was stick wide open. So what it turns out is this cable here, I guess is the choke. It uh, was wide open and then it revved way up. So we don't want to run it too much now. I don't want to bug the neighbors. But if we hit the key here, I might have to pump it a bit. It runs, guys. So in the daytime, we're going to let it run a little longer. But uh, there we go. Yeah, so it runs. It's like 1 in the morning now. And I don't want to run it too long in here. Uh, I think it might not be a happy situation for the neighbors, but there we go. Off carb, off fuel pump, and we're rocking. So I guess brakes might be the next thing we have to figure out. Uh, we'll do a little shop clean up here now. All right, guys and girls, I'm calling this an ambulance bumper. And all you need to know is it's gotta go. I do not like it, it doesn't belong in this vehicle. It is like, let's say, maybe your grandpa or your opa, you know, your great grandpa, would have made this out of diamond plate. It's like eight, eighth inch thick. And it is not bolted on, it's welded on actually very well. So it's gonna come off. So what I got here is these blades came in this package. One blade is 25 bucks Canadian. So they were saying this blade at the store, the local firefighters like to use it um, to do their work. So for vehicles and stuff like that when they practice. So if you see here, it cut right through it. You can see the thickness of this compared to my fingernail. It cuts through it. It takes a little bit of time. We're halfway through now. So we're gonna continue to cut this. As you can see, it's slow going, but this is coming off one way or another. So when we're ready to drop this, I will fill you guys in and that will probably be an hour from now. All right, guys, I am almost very extra happy about this situation here. We have one little bit holding this on. Now I'm not sure if we'll be able to wiggle it, but metal yes they cut through thick metal so that it goes through this guy it's not like butter but it goes through really well and through this that's what this bumper is made of thicker than anything else on this truck so i wanted to check the clutch it felt really light a lot lighter than i figure a manual clutch should feel um i guess it's got hydraulic fluid in it so i don't know what you call it hydraulic without power uh, it had no feel, so I just gravity bled the thing really easy. It drained right out right away, filled it a cup three times full to make sure we got the old stuff out of the system. And it works. Check this out. So I'm not sure, guys, like there's lots of uh, pedal feel there. It's solid, guys. So that's good. Yeah, so I'm not sure... Um, if there's going to be any leaks on there, but I'm not seeing any at this point, I'll have to keep an eye on it. And I think we're good for now for that. So last inspection before we go for a drive would be the brakes, I guess. Um, make sure they stop, but now at least I can put a clutch in and change gears. So, all right, guys and girls, I just picked up this thrush muffler. I don't want to make my neighbors mad. So we're going to weld this on and get the truck a little bit quieter. And this is only 50 bucks. I've found this tube in the shop. So we'll get it rolling. All 
All right, guys, we are performing a bench test on the starter. It just quit working all of a sudden. I was going to take you guys along for a ride. That's where we were at after we put the muffler on. So I got my jumper cables here, but something to note, when I pulled it out of there, something like part of my nest kind of came out of there. I bet you we got mouse nests in there, which was also in the starter. You can see bits and pieces of it here. But uh, see if we can do this flipped over. So there's supposed to be a ground right there. They say ground it to the body. And somewhere in here, you should be able to see that gear move. See, check that out, guys. That works, but no starter motor. So, confirms uh, what I thought. We'll have to bring it in. All right, guys and girls, as you can see, we got the starter back, two days turnaround time. I think we're gonna bolt it on, but I'll show you what we got here at a local place that fixes starters and charging systems so let's check this out so here is the starter i'm really impressed the company's called start and charge um brand new gear in here they've cleaned all this stuff up really nicely uh, all i need to do is paint it i've asked them to add this so that we can actually start using the ballast again this goes right to the ballast once it, the car is running so that's cool um yeah fully rebuilt also new solenoid and then they machine the armature and stuff like that so we're gonna drop that guy in there the starter is hooked up and we now have this extra connection uh, right here and that allows us to use the ballast again the way it should be so it's all hooked up properly so we got the coil hooked up and we got to find a wrench that'll tighten this nut right here. Should we go find one in the shop? Mm. All right, we gotta tighten up our fuel tank here. Get the truck! Get the truck! So that's gonna run around the roll bar and around here. Should work. So that should work. So uh, I think the next logical thing to do is fill up the tires with air again and. Uh, See if this thing starts. All right, guys. So I actually have driven this thing once already. I was a little bit too excited and I forgot to take you guys along. It also didn't have any brakes at that point. Uh, that was kind of fun. So the plan is now I've got the front brakes. The back ones I got to do yet. I think we got some brake power. Um, let's see if it starts. every time once you get it going the first time requires some quick start so let's do a little drive see if it works So that will be on the list yet, and uh, yeah, that was good. Let's start it one more time. Not in here. So yeah, 
no brakes, uh, no temperature gauge, and some sort of big exhaust leak under the hood. But I had a good time. So that'll be all on this vehicle for now. Um, I got a project I'm hoping I can bring you pretty soon that we've been doing on the Blue Celica. Uh, Celica, depending where you are in certain parts of the world. But uh, it's a good time. Thanks for joining me on this three-part mini-series of getting this thing running. I've met my goal for this year. So next year, let's get her mechanically sound and take her for a drive on the road on a permit. So get your projects done, guys, and we'll talk to you later. You can see it down there. There's two, the bottom of the radiator, and some sort of loose bolt here. So we got our work cut out for us yet to get it driving properly. But uh, yeah, figured I would share that with you guys. A little bonus after the credit scene. So yeah, that was a little bonus after the credits. We got three little coolant leaks. The top one I knew about, the bottom one's new, and the other one I kind of discovered yesterday. So. We'll talk to you later, guys. Have a good one.